Kansas State football coach Chris Kleiman. I think out of everybody within the Big 12, since we began this show from scratch in 2020, you have appeared with us as much as anybody. Uh, that's good, I hope. No, that yeah. is good. Well, I mean, no, it, it's really, really good. Uh, right now, you're here in Vegas, Big 12 media days. How much time between now and when you start practices in August, do you have a chance to decompress or is that over? No, I've still, I haven't done it yet. And I've promised my wife that I will. So on July 15th, we're going to shut it down for a week Good. and uh, and try to get away for a week. And uh, but up until then, you know, just it's never ending kind of right now. Um, and so but I, I will. I have to for a week. I get, you got to do it for families. And I tell our coaches that all the time yourself for sure. But your, your wife and kids go through the brunt of it. And uh, we need to make sure we spend time with those guys. Do you have like is it like a no football rule for that week? Like, do you you know? Yeah, it's going to be as best as I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as that anymore. <laughs> but it's going to be the best we can. So Las Vegas, we've uh, you know been around Arlington the last few years. Uh, are you much of a Vegas guy? Okay. So Gene Taylor and I flew in together, and uh, uh, Gene and I come to Vegas once in a while. And I was here a lot when I was uh, in my 20s and 30s. This will be the first time I've ever been to Vegas, and I will not have a cocktail. Oh, wow. And it's the most sleep I'm ever going to have. Because <laughs> <laughs> we are in at, we got here at 8 o'clock, and we're leaving at 5.30. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. You, 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 what do you mean, no, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we left Austin Monday morning at 6.15, so you know we got no sleep the night nope. before. So we did that before we even got to Vegas. We yep. got no sleep. But, I mean, we were dead yesterday Throughout the day, we were absolutely zoned Hopefully out. We sat dead. out in the sun for a while, <laughs> <laughs> baked a little bit by the pool. I know one thing: we slept a lot. We, we sure did. <laughs> Expectations, what the the culture, what yeah. Chris Kleiman's done, and what K State has done. Uh, what's it like to maybe have a target on your back? Um, you know, it's been five, going on six years now for me, which is crazy. Uh, how long it's been. Uh, I, I like where our locker room is at. I like the kids we have. Um, uh, far as target, when you have as many new teams in our league, I, I don't think you can rank any of them. I really don't. Mm. I, I mean, last year, I'll, 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 last year at this event in in Dallas, I talked to Neil. Mm -hmm. You know, Neil was picked last, and, he, he and, was, he, and, he and I'm like Neil, you're going to have a damn good football team, and he had a really good team. Um, so you just don't ever know, and I, I just with 30 to 40 new guys every June, um, it, it's hard to predict. And so uh, I, we don't. We're going to try to kind of squash those expectations. We just got to continue to get better. We're going to replay that whenever our predictions are yeah. absolutely yeah. wrong on the finish because, yeah, Chris Kleiman doesn't know how the league's going to go. How I are we supposed no to know idea. how the league's going to go? Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's I, such great parody in our league, though, and mm -hmm. that's I'm excited about the new teams that uh, uh, a number of us are playing because your fan base got to be excited because they don't know a lot of these schools. You mentioned heading into your sixth year now and how crazy. I was going to ask you about that. You were the new guy on the I block, know. it felt like, and it still sort of feels that way, but we got to turn that page. I mean, six years in now. I know it because uh, there was a bunch of us that year. Uh, Neil yeah. and I, uh, I think Les was that year. Uh, Wellesie's with me now. Mm -hmm. He was in yep. that year. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I know it. It's, it's free, that's gone fast, though. Uh, with the schedule, like you used to, you could kind of, like, project out and go, okay, yep. well, because we, you all had the same schedule. Outside of your non-conference games, everybody was playing everybody. Yep. Now... Like, it's impossible to figure out how it's all going to go week to week because you, you aren't going to play the same schedule. No, and it's put a lot of work on our coaches this summer in the fact of, you know, we're playing Colorado, we're playing Arizona, we're playing Arizona State, we're playing uh, BYU, and we're playing Cincinnati. There's five schools that we don't have any background on. We don't, we don't have a, uh, a litany of, of information, even though BYU and Cincinnati were in our league last year. We didn't play them, so it's like, okay, you see them on a crossover game, but you're really not paying attention to them. Whereas, you know, Baylor, Tech, TCU, mm -hmm. we've got booklets of, and we're not right now playing them in the regular season. Avery Anderson, and, and, and uh, Johnson, Avery Johnson. Johnson, excuse me, the quarterback, and, and what he did, the explosiveness of what he showed, the quarterback change, Will Howard's now at Ohio yep. State, Give us an idea about who he is as a player in the locker room and, yeah. and how players 
rally around him. Yeah, mature beyond his years for a true sophomore. Uh, and uh, the month of December was good for him when Will had already departed, uh, that it was his offense, it was his team, and the guys gravitated to him. Um, he's a really confident guy, but not an arrogant guy. And um, he's the fastest kid on the field every time we step out there. I don't care if it's a workout, if it's a practice, he's the fastest kid on the team. And when you have that dynamic ability, um, he's going to make a ton of plays on his own. Now it's just making sure for us that we keep it within the framework of what we're doing offensively. And bringing in Coach Wells, we've made a number of adjustments to what we're doing offensively. We still have a lot of things with Connor Riley being our OC in our run game stuff, but our pass game's drastically changed. And so it, it, it's going to emphasize the strength that, that Avery has. He is, you know, you said the most dynamic athlete that you have on the field. Like, he does so many different things. But you brought in other dynamic athletes. And, and guys, yeah. you know, you, you have uh, Edwards at running back now to kind of pair that up. Um, your Kansas State is a running team. I mean, like, mm -hmm. just at your core. Uh, how much does that accentuate now that you have three or four different guys who can who can make plays for you? Like yeah, I, it's going to change some this mm -hmm. year. You know, um, it's interesting when, when you look at it. We would be maybe a 60-40 team uh, running the football to throw in the football. But when you have a really good lead in the second half and it's blowing 30-mile-an-hour wind wherever you're at, you're probably going to be smart and try to win the game and mm -hmm. keep the ball on the ground. That's why DJ Giddens had such a good yeah. year for us. This year we know we have to be able to spread it out a lot more and get Dylan Edwards, get Keegan Johnson, get Jace Brown. Uh, we've got uh, so many new players that are on our, on our football team, the football, as well as continue to ride DJ Giddens. But now, you know, when you throw Avery in there, you have that elusive guy, similar to what maybe Adrian Martinez was, but you have Avery that couldn't hit a home run on every play um, with his speed. So I like it because I think it makes us more difficult to defend, knowing you have to defend from sideline to sideline with, with not only the, the ability to run the ball, but the speed that we have. It's this new era with the transfer portal. Did you ever have any idea when Dylan Edwards originally went elsewhere of like, you maintain relationships, yeah. period. Yep. But is that even more important now because there's a really good chance you could see that guy again? It's imperative. Um, and and you, I would say this. And, and Dylan, when he went to Colorado, the transfer portal was truly in vogue. In 2021, 2020, it was a part of it, but not like it is now. And you can handle it two ways. When Dylan called and said, Coach, I'm going in another direction, you can – yell at the kid, you can tell him he's making the biggest mistake of his life, and you're never going to talk to that kid again. Or you can be there and say, man, I appreciate you giving us an opportunity. I wish you nothing but the best. If something changes, you'd have a place here. And so when he entered the transfer portal and we got wind of that he was officially in it, I made the call right away. I mean, there's sometimes an assistant does, and so I made the call right away. Called the kid, called his parents, and said, let's get you here this weekend. You, you, you belong in Manhattan. And they firmly believed that they belong in Manhattan. They came that weekend, had a terrific weekend, um, just canceled everything else. Uh, and, and he knew that this was the right place for him. So the transfer portal, it is what it is. How would you fix it or make it even better? Or is it just the haze out the barn? Yeah, uh, the transfer portal is good for college football. It's been good for uh, a, a lot of schools. I mean, everybody's benefited from it. Everybody's lost some kids from it. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of it. You know, we've had Adrian Martinez. We've had Josh Hayes. We've had mm -hmm. um, kids at Marquis Siegel at starting safety. We've had really good players in it. Um, Julius Brents was a drafted kid. But you know you're going to lose some kids. The only thing that I would like is to cut it down to one window. That, that the, the two windows, we can't control it, but we're trying to limit it a little bit. You know, if we just had the window in December, then you could have spring ball and have a roster. Now you have spring ball, and then you have another window uh, to enter the portal, and then you don't have that chance to get like everybody is. We have all these new kids, whether they're high school kids or transfers, starting in your summer classes in June, and your strength coach has all the time with them. You get a little bit of time, but you, you don't get enough. My thing that, that I'm trying to help advocate and push is get, get to an OTA model like they have for NFL. I don't even care if you take spring ball away. Nobody can have spring ball anyway because everybody's got rosters down so right. much. Just give us 15 days in June. Don't put pads on. You don't need to put the pads on. And, and you can have installs and you can have meetings, but you can have those guys so that you know that's your roster rather than 
figuring out your roster in April and then losing them in May doesn't make a lot of sense. You can always create an event to do. I mean, you know, bringing yeah. back the alumni, that's that's not really that hard to do. <laughs> you know, you don't have to have a, a, a traditional spring yeah. game around it. Um, going uh, back to the way that you have to re keep those relationships, um, there are, because of the portal, there's so many things that, you know, you might have been Dylan's first choice anyway, but mm -hmm. then an opportunity, Colorado comes up and you want to see how that is. I think maybe like, Alabama with Nick Saban. There's probably a lot of kids who maybe they were the second choice as a school, but I mean, you're going to go play for Nick Saban, right? Yep. And then Nick Saban retires and they kind of get to see how the other half lives where they go back to their first choice. Is that something you always kind of have to kind of yeah. you know, measure those factors? Absolutely. And, and the fact that you know there's unfortunately going to be a number of coaching changes every mm -hmm. year. And that's, that's facilitated much of the transfer portal talk right now in window is when a head coach leaves, that's the thing that it's kind of open game on that roster. I still don't agree with the tampering that goes on mm -hmm. because it goes on somehow, some way. I don't know if it comes from coaches, but somebody's calling somebody to say, we've got a spot. And I wish we could curtail that a little bit. But I know that that's one of the things when you have a coaching change, uh, Ben, it, I feel sorry for the athletic directors. It's like you need to replace that guy within a day and you don't have time to because if it goes on a week, you could lose your whole roster. So we've already established the media doesn't really know what we're talking about most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so the preseason poll, I at least feel a little bit better because you're even saying, like, who the heck knows. But one thing that I know really caught a lot of people's attention in Manhattan was no players on the preseason all Big 12 team. Is that wasn't there? Oh, I don't oh. think that there was. I don't think that there was. So did you You guys... asked Austin Moore about that. Yeah. You asked Siegel about that. We, we mentioned it. We, okay. did. we had one of our workouts, and, and we – Kenny Lanou had the list for me, and I went through the list. It didn't take very long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. That's it. Yep, that's it. Okay, gotcha. And that was yeah. it. That was all yeah. that was. That was That was the. Didn't need to be said, right? Nothing to be said. It just was really quiet and maybe irritated a few guys. Uh, are, like Neil Brown, you mentioned him. Last yep. year, he was pissed. Oh, he, uh, yeah. The background for where they had the player breakout sessions, the colors were wrong or something. Oh, I mean, were he, they really? Plus they, that that yeah. added gas to the oh, fire. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, much, so how, yeah. how much of that do you use? How often can you use that? You have that? to. Okay. you, you got to find ways to use things. And that's one that, that was simple because it was – uh, you know, just a, a poll that I don't. Know, you guys voted on it, didn't you? There was media yep. member. That's yep. all it was. Was yeah. media correct? Yep. You know, and but you see, okay, guys, maybe we're doing something the right way. If we're predicted second and don't have an all conference guy, maybe there is strength in, in parity and numbers at a lot of positions as well as now. Some of you guys got to step up. You know, uh, how much? I mean, look, Kirby Smart somehow convinced his team that won the national championship a couple of years ago that nobody believed in him. Yeah. <laughs> like, you really, you have to thread a needle of what's true and what is a little bit myth. Is it like a, an acquired skill? How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, you, you, you're trying to de de decipher when you can use something. You can't use it all the time. Mm -hmm. But that one was an easy one. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> kind of like, okay, guys, we think we're really good. Yeah. You know, Many people think we're very good. Um, we didn't talk about the poll. We just said, here's the first, here's the all-conference team. But, yeah, you, you're always trying to find a way, and maybe it's a specific game. You know, maybe it's early in the week. You know, I'm always careful uh, about putting bulletin board material out mm -hmm. there, but everybody tries to utilize anything they can. That's why uh, I stay away from social media. I tell our kids do. I, I know it's hard um, because it's their world. Um, but uh, be be careful what you say because it can be twisted a lot of different ways. So you have Avery Johnson here. We've already talked a bit about him. I think that's self-explanatory. Uh, Hadley Panzer, Austin Moore, Brendan Mott, Marcus Siegel. Yep. Uh, what kind of thought do you put into, hey, I want these guys to come with us and be the representatives of our brand? Well, Austin and Brendan Mott were very simple. They walked onto our program and have been there six years. And they are the heart and soul of what we are, walk-ons that – Buster Tail didn't earn scholarships after the first year. It was their second or third year with Mott. Um, Hadley Panzer uh, was a kid from Lake in Kansas that was a starter for us um, as soon as he, probably second season, but uh, is kind of the lifeblood. And you got to realize you had Cooper Beebe, KT, KT Levison, Hayden Gillum, and, that, and, and Duff. That was the voice, and he learned from those guys, and I saw him take a little bit from all those guys and become a really good leader in that offensive line. And then Marquis Siegel uh, is a transfer that I think is the best defensive back in, in, in the league. I really do. This kid is special. He was started out at North Dakota State, 
We recruited him. He's from Omaha. He's got size. He's got speed. He'll he'll strike you. He's very very intelligent. He's in the line of Rush East, who's playing for mm-hmm. for the Rams. Uh, Josh Hayes, who's playing from the Bucks, uh, to play that spot for us. Siegel's probably a little bit faster, and a little bit bigger than both of them. I think he's one of the best in the country. Chris, it's always great to have you. We appreciate your time. Absolutely, guys. Good enjoy, luck. enjoy yourself here. Get it, some sun later it, on today, okay? Get out of Vegas. Get out of Vegas. <laughs> I'm going to. i got a few more hours left. <laughs> always great, guys. Thanks. Chris Kleiman, head football coach at K-State with us, 365 Sports.